all right guys we're back again today's gonna be a pretty long video i could say customer called us with a leak in spick it out front so here we go we locate we go inside the basement we find the water main we try to locate the spigot and boom we find the shutoff valve which is off already propress lovers there you go there's a propress shuttle bar for you nope we did not install that we only solder uh we use propress but it's for commercial purposes or when we can't shut off the water as you can see the spigot on top of the shoving unit they got here it's going to be real tight so my guy's outside i'm inside in this little cubby on top of the shoving units i pull out the insulation try to clear out the area as best i can it's going to be a pain just to get in here so i pull out the milwaukee order cutter i start cutting this copper going to the spigot out front it's a decent run that spigot's good 14 15 inches long the copper right now uh, so i cut out the copper my guy's gonna be outside pulling out the old spigot and uh, you can see him he's gonna have a have to pull out the the nails since back in the day they used nails no screws so he pulls out the nail puller hammer takes him out comes out like nothing he got one on each side usually they're like all screwed in with a flathead screwdriver screws or something but this time there was nails they came out pretty simple it wasn't painted so as you can see there he pulls out the old spigot it's a good 15 inches long we got that Diablo bit, paddle bit. I love them. That's all I use. Slaps it onto the Milwaukee drill and he goes to town. He drills it. We have to make the hole bigger because the old spigot, they made the hole just right for the copper. We always install frost freeze where we can. Majority of the time, it's like 95% it's all frost freeze for us. So. He drill makes the hole bigger, make sure it's clear, he feels something, and he probably has to go back again and clear it out. So he sticks in the paddle bit again, make sure everything's clear, moves it around, make sure there's nothing going to obstruct the, the new frost free going through. I'm inside here clearing out everything, I'm letting him know, yep, it's clear, it's good to go. So we start assembling everything. Um, I'm going to start unsweating the old 90 going to the spigot as you can see here i pull out the torch guys if you guys are going to use the torch and you guys are going to be soldering or doing something next to a joist you can see here the joist is burnt the old plumber i guess wasn't good enough with the torch or he just moved and he burnt the joist that's a pet peeve of mine just put something there so you don't burn out the joist all right guys I like using a heat shield, a piece of metal, anything just to block the wood from burning. All right, so I apply some heat. As you can see here, you see some steam coming out. That's because there's water in the pipe. All right, so I just heat it up enough until the water just starts steaming out. Once there's no water in the pipe, you're going to start seeing the solder start splattering, get soft. That's where you can grab your channels and start moving the the fitting or the pipe whatever you're going to remove off so i keep on applying heat keep applying heat until i know it's ready and then i grab the channels and start just moving it just tug it slowly little little there here and there and once it's ready it'll pop out easily boom while it's still hot while it's still hot i say all the time grab a rag clean the pipe all right, make sure that pipe is spotless. That way there's no solder. You don't have to worry about cleaning that. That's the thing with soldering. You have to make sure the pipe is super clean. Tip number one, make sure pipe is clean. Tip number two, make sure the pipe is clean. Tip number three, make sure the fitting is clean. Tip number four, make sure it's clean. Everything, make sure it's spotless before you put anything together. All right, so once you wipe it down, you can grab some emery cloth, some sandpaper, and you clean it. Make sure it's spotless. Make sure it's clean all around. Make sure there's no old solder, any clumps, any dark spots. Make sure everything's clean. All right, you can see here I go a couple times around the pipe. Make sure everything's good. All right. 
I turn around here and there every single direction just clean it every all around make sure everything's spotless I can't say this enough make sure the pipe is clean a lot of guys have problems with soldering that's why it's because the pipe wasn't clean and they just couldn't uh, clean it correctly so here we go again another thing I do for frost freeze I do not like soldering the copper to the frost free I like using a female so again I'm lucky enough to have a helper here he's gonna hold the pipe for me while I solder the female and uh, once I solder the female you can see here I clean it up real good and I'll screw it on to the end of the frost free this is a big plus because let's say down the road the frost free starts leaking or the homeowner needs to replace the siding or something it's going to be a lot easier to get into that little cubby unscrew the frost free and pull the new one in if i if i sweat the, the copper to the frost free he's going to have to call us back and we have to get in there pull the torch out that's a no-no for what no reason just get in there with a pair of channels unscrew the frost free screw the new one back in you're in and out you're on to the next one all right so you can see here once the female is all soldered i let it cool down while i put some teflon onto the frost free i like using blue monster teflon a lot of guys still use the traditional white teflon either or is good i just personally like the blue teflon a lot better i feel it's a lot thicker and it goes a lot smoother onto the pipe either or this you should go around the threads about four to five times that should be enough i do it by eye i don't count so i put some pipe dope around the threads a lot of guys argue about should i put pipe dope should i not put pipe dope i've been doing it for 18 years this way and it's no issues all right so once you put the pipe dope screw that female on and unfortunately the frost free brand i use which is legend doesn't have a flat spot so i can't use another crescent wrench so i gotta use channels and a crescent wrench on the female i use crescent wrenches anywhere i could that way i don't scratch anything up even though customers not going to see this for my sake i'd rather not scratch anything so you can see here it's mm. nice and long and my guy's gonna go outside he's gonna put it through the hole you're gonna see here struggling a little that's because he forgot to put the the gasket it comes with a little gasket that way it could be watertight insect tight so he gets it back in there pushes it through once he pushes it through i'm going to be inside i'll mark it out exactly where it needs to be cut and i pull out the milwaukee cutter all right the Milwaukee uh, auto cutter I use I used to use the general which is the orange one a lot of guys still use the orange one I like the Milwaukee one I'm a Milwaukee guy every tool I own is Milwaukee from power tools hand tools you name it it's Milwaukee so once that's all cut again remember tip number one tip number two tip number three hope you guys remember clean your fittings clean your pipe so here we go once I cut it clean it again make sure everything's spotless all right everywhere make sure there's no grease left on it anything because anything is going to interrupt the soldering job um, it's gonna if it's not clean enough the flux helps it but it's better off if you clean it with sandpaper emery cloth anything just make sure you scuff up the pipe and it's nice and clean so once it's clean up to your standards my standards are pretty high it has to be nice and clean and spotless so it takes me a little while put some flux around the pipe put some flux inside the fittings and put everything together i'm lucky enough that this frost free is only one fitting i have to solder so that means i have to solder two joints which is going to be nice and quick so once i got everything together make sure everything's in okay so i cut moving around again remember guys this is a real tight spot for me i'm on my back right now sweating no no air conditioning in this basement but we'll get through it so my guy's outside he's gonna ask me to move it left or right or he's gonna move it make sure it's centered and he's gonna screw it in once he screws it in 
and I know it's perfectly level outside then we'll move on to solder and everything make sure everything's level before soldering you don't want to solder everything up and next thing you go you go outside and it's all crooked all right make sure the finished product is going to be straight all right once it's all straight i pull out the torch and you can see here it's real nice quick remember guys pay attention if you're not capable of not burning the wood put something there for me it's it's like four inches away it's no problem at all remember guys just take your time soldering don't rush it because if you rush it solder is going to start dripping all over the place you're going to burn the joist and it's just you're going to create a big problem so just take your time you can see here nice and sweet and everything's going to go smoothly all right once i'm done here you can see the finished product comes out real nice nice and clean all right customers happy everyone's happy if you live in north jersey has a plumber work that needs to be done give us a call we'll take care of you see you in the next one see ya